The animation opens with a breathtaking view of the magnificent Alps in Switzerland, set against the backdrop of 1960. High up on a rocky cliff, we catch a glimpse of two majestic eagles, Rebecca and Moan, as they celebrate the arrival of their newly hatched sons, Ari and Abel. At that time, they as parents shower their little ones with tender love and care, ensuring their well-being amidst the rugged mountain terrain. As the days turn into weeks, Rebecca and Moan continue to protect and nurture Ari and Abel with unwavering dedication. Their bond grows stronger with each passing moment. However, fate takes an unexpected turn when Moan encounters a rival male eagle. Engulfed in a fierce battle to safeguard their territory, Moan fights valiantly but succumbs to a grave injury, losing his life in the process. Soon after, Moan's lifeless body is discovered by Denser, a ranger, and his loyal companion, Keller. At that time, Keller, a widower, carries the weight of his own sorrow, having lost his beloved wife in a tragic fire that consumed their former home. He has a son named Lucas, a striking teenager of German and Swiss heritage. Since his mother's death, Lucas has chosen silence as his refuge, shutting himself off from the world. Nonetheless, he frequently visits their old house, seeking solace in photographs that capture cherished memories with his parents. Months had passed, and Ari and Abel were growing older. However, their mother had forsaken them. Rebecca had made a deliberate choice to leave them behind, driven by the instinct that a female eagle could only care for a single fledgling. As time went on, Ari and Abel found themselves locked in constant battle, driven by the gnawing ache of hunger. Their desperate struggle ended tragically when Abel lost his footing and tumbled from their lofty nest. On the other hand, Ari, still perched above, watched helplessly as his brother plummeted to the ground below. Meanwhile, Rebecca heard the anguished cries of Abel, and she hesitated, torn between her two sons. But another call, the plea of her remaining offspring, reached her ears, and Rebecca made her choice. Shortly after, she flew towards Ari, leaving Abel behind. On the other hand, down on the forest floor, Abel lay in agony, his body becoming a feast for the invading ants. Despite his pain, he refused to surrender. He mustered his strength and embarked on a desperate quest for shelter. At night, Abel found himself huddled in a secluded corner of the forest, far from the safety of his nest. Soon as the darkness closed in, his situation grew even more dire. It seemed that death itself loomed over him when a fox, prowling nearby, almost sealed his fate. In a cruel twist of fate, the fox was momentarily distracted, allowing Abel a fleeting chance to survive. And then, by sheer happenstance, Scott, Lucas's faithful dog, stumbled upon the wounded and weary Abel. On the other hand, Lucas, who happened to be chasing after Scott, appeared just in time to witness the encounter between the dog and the fallen eagle. Soon after, Lucas approached Abel with caution, his step slow and deliberate. He gently removed his jacket, using it to warm Abel's trembling body. Together, they made their way to Lucas's home. Then, as they arrived, Lucas swiftly tore open a pillowcase, fashioning a makeshift nest for Abel. With tender care, he provided food for the hungry bird. It turned out there was something about Abel that tugged at Lucas's heart, igniting a deep sense of compassion within him. He longed to communicate with the wounded creature to understand its plight. But Lucas's concern for Abel went beyond mere gestures. Even as he prepared to assist his father at work, Lucas took a moment to give Abel his own hoodie, offering warmth and comfort. In the afternoon, while his father dozed off, Lucas covertly gathered some food, ensuring that Abel's hunger would not go unsatisfied. With a mischievous glint in his eyes, he then brought Abel along to help with the task of collecting hay, a sight that would melt anyone's heart. Unbeknownst to them, Denver, observing from a distance, bore witness to this endearing scene. Then, as the day drew to a close, Lucas and Abel found themselves lying side by side in a picturesque meadow nestled within the breathtaking Alpine Valley. The distant rumble of thunder signaled a rainfall. Swift to react, Lucas hurriedly guided Abel back to the safety of his humble dwelling, shielding the fragile creature from the approaching storm. The following day, Lucas made his way back to his humble dwelling, carrying a bountiful pile of hay to further comfort Abel's nest. As Lucas lovingly fed Abel an earthworm, Denver suddenly appeared, catching Lucas off guard. To Lucas's surprise, Denver handed him a piece of duck liver, a gift intended for Abel's nourishment. With Abel contentedly eating, Denver began to ask about Lucas's presence in that place. He wondered why Lucas continuously provoked his father's anger and chose to remain silent, carrying the weight of losing his mother. Hearing that, Lucas hesitated to respond, his lips sealed tightly. Yet, Denver took no offense at his silence. Instead, he presented Lucas with a book titled Brother of the Wind. Then, in an act of kindness, Denver broke a small section of the wall, allowing warm sunlight to penetrate the dwelling and embrace Abel. The following day, Lucas resumed his usual routine of assisting his father. They toiled diligently until nightfall. Once their labor was complete, Lucas retreated to his room. 
In the secrecy of the night, he stealthily took one of his father's chickens, driven by the desire to provide for Abel. Though Lucas's method was misguided, his intentions were to offer solace and care to Abel, the feathered companion he held dear. Soon after, Lucas retired to his room. There, he opened a cherished Bible and gazed at a photograph of his family. As Lucas immersed himself in the holy words, a newfound inspiration sparked within him. In a moment of revelation, he decided to name the young eagle Abel. From that day forward, Abel became his official name. The scene then shifts, revealing Ari living alongside Rebecca. On the other hand, Ari was also grown larger over time. Meanwhile, in the yard, Lucas could be seen attempting to offer a small mouse to Abel, his efforts driven by genuine care. Witnessing this, Denver advised Lucas that the mouse was too sizable for Abel to consume. Once again, Denver presented Lucas with a portion of duck liver meant to be given to Abel. As the days passed, Lucas made it a habit to engage Abel in playful activities. Not only that, but Lucas also took it upon himself to teach Abel the art of flight. With each passing moment, Lucas grew closer to Denver as well. Then, on an unexpected day, Denver surprised Lucas with a gift which was a glove to protect himself during the training sessions to help Abel soar. Seeing that, Lucas's heart swelled with joy upon receiving this thoughtful present, even though his reluctance to speak still lingered. Shortly after, the scene shifts to Rebecca and Lucas. At that time, they jointly train the young eagles to take flight. Along the cliff's edge, Rebecca dutifully imparts her wisdom to Ari, guiding him on how to catch prey should he stumble from the sky. She also instructs Ari on the art of graceful flight. Then, as time progresses, Ari gains the confidence to flap his wings and soar towards his mother. Meanwhile, not far away, Lucas adopts a different approach in teaching Abel how to navigate the skies. Although lacking the innate instincts of an eagle like Rebecca, Lucas relies on his intuition to help Abel find his wings. Initially, Lucas entices Abel to leap from greater heights by offering enticing food. However, this method proves fruitless, prompting Lucas to explore alternative tactics. With infinite patience and meticulousness, Lucas teaches Abel to battle against the resistance of the wind, gradually instilling in him the audacity to flap his wings boldly and take flight. The following morning, he awakens with a heart full of joy, witnessing Abel gracefully soaring through the air. Excitedly, Lucas calls out to Abel, urging him to draw nearer, but the young eagle remains aloof, refusing to come closer. At that time, Lucas couldn't help but feel a mix of fear and worry, fearing that Abel would come to harm amidst the vast wilderness. However, Denver stepped in, assuring him that Abel's intentions were pure that he simply yearned for thrilling adventures in the boundless expanse of the sky. Abel must have been brimming with sheer delight, relishing the freedom to soar through the heavens. Soon after, Abel's flights carried him to every nook and cranny of the valley and the mountains. It wasn't long before he encountered two deer on the mountainside. Sadly, he lacked the skills to engage in combat, resorting to mere biting in his attempt to defend himself. Helplessly, Abel succumbed to defeat as he tumbled down the mountainside, colliding with unforgiving rocks, for his adversary had also stumbled in the encounter. Meanwhile, Lucas, burdened by the loss of Abel, tirelessly scoured the land in search of his precious companion. Each passing day, he yearned for Abel's return, all the while dreading the possibility that his father, an avid hunter armed with a shotgun, might mistake Abel for prey. At the same time, Lucas's heart trembled at the thought of Abel succumbing to the perils of conflicts with other creatures dwelling in the depths of the forest. After three days of relentless searching, Lucas, pedaling on his bicycle, finally stumbled upon Abel once again. Then, a surge of happiness and relief washed over Lucas as he realized that Abel was unharmed. The following day, with Denver's assistance, Lucas constructed a trap using a carcass, intending to train Abel in the art of hunting. As time progressed, Abel displayed signs of growing intelligence and swiftness, honing his skills under Lucas's guidance. One afternoon, Denver advised Lucas to promptly return to his father's house before summer drew to a close. He also emphasized the importance of releasing Abel into the wild before winter arrived. Reluctantly, Lucas rejected Denver's counsel, uttering his first words to another human since his mother's passing. Yet, Denver patiently explained that these actions were necessary for Abel's well-being, for Abel was, in essence, a wild creature. In the end, Lucas was compelled to use Denver's suggestion, despite the profound sorrow that would accompany the loss of his cherished eagle, Abel. At that time, Abel had become Lucas's sole companion in that place, making the impending separation all the more heart-wrenching. On the following day, accompanied by Denver, Lucas embarked on a journey to a distant mountain to release Abel. There, Abel's eyes were purposefully closed, ensuring that he would not recognize the path leading back home. Before bidding farewell to Abel, Lucas attached a name tag to Abel's foot, fashioned from his own bracelet. With a bittersweet sigh, Lucas removed the blindfold, raising his hand in a symbolic gesture. There, he spoke his final goodbye to Abel, wishing for their paths to cross again someday. Now liberated, Abel soared amidst the breathtaking cliffs of the Allen Mountains. 
As evening descended, Lucas found solace in his room, meticulously arranging the bird feathers he had collected over time. Amongst them, he placed Abel's feathers in the most prominent position, paying homage to the bond they had shared. Not long after, winter approached, casting its icy grip upon the inhabitants of the Alps, who struggled to endure the harsh cold. In the midst of this wintry landscape, hunger gnawed at Abel's core, urging him to pounce upon a fox near the riverbank. However, the water's frigid temperatures prevented him from retrieving the fallen fox trapped in the icy currents. Meanwhile, Lucas's father worked hard to set traps around their house to keep wild animals away. Then, the snow kept falling and covering everything in a thick blanket of white. This made it really difficult for Lucas to find his way back home because the path was no longer visible. The following day, Lucas ventured to a place where he had previously stacked rocks before the arrival of winter. There, he painstakingly arranged the stones and gently fixed Abel's feathers. At that time, Lucas's heart yearned for Abel's return, hoping that the eagle would come to that very spot. Placing pieces of meat upon the rocks, he settled down, eagerly awaiting Abel's arrival. However, not long after, a wolf appeared, approaching Lucas. Startled, he jolted upright, hastily fleeing to protect himself. Tragically, in his panic, Lucas unknowingly stepped into a trap set by his father. Then, the ravenous wolf closed in on Lucas, poised to strike. Miraculously, Denver, upon hearing Lucas's cries, rushed to his aid, saving him from the clutches of danger. Overwhelmed with fear, he tightly embraced Denver, seeking comfort from the harrowing ordeal. Meanwhile, high on the edge of a cliff, Abel basked in the sun's warm rays. Suddenly, snowflakes began to descend upon the mountain peaks, prompting him to take flight and escape the wintry downfall. Then, as fate would have it, Abel's flight led him to the very location where Lucas had placed the enticing morsels of meat upon the rocks. Thus, he returned to the valley, his birthplace. Meanwhile, from a nearby cliff, Ari observed with longing as Abel gracefully soared through the sky. Shortly after enduring the trials of a harsh winter, the warmth of summer now embraced the land. During this season, Abel crossed paths with Ari as they both ventured in search of sustenance. Instead of engaging in conflict, they recognized their kinship and chose to coexist harmoniously, finding peace amidst the untamed wilderness. Meanwhile, Lucas found himself at his old house, sorting through his cherished belongings, preparing to depart from the valley. Unexpectedly, Keller arrived and unleashed a torrent of harsh words upon him. It turned out Keller was angry and frustrated with Lucas because he had been quiet and withdrawn ever since his wife passed away. He was so disgusted that he even thought about burning the bag that Lucas was carrying, which would have made Lucas very sad. As a result, Lucas decided to leave the area. However, as Keller glanced upon a family photograph nestled within Lucas's bag, he hesitated. Recognizing the significance of this memento, Keller swiftly rescued the photograph, shielding it from the flames. Fueled by newfound determination, Keller pursued Lucas, braving the rainstorm that drenched the forested valley. As night fell, Lucas encountered great difficulty while scaling a cliff. Tragically, fate took an ill turn, for Lucas lost his footing, succumbing to an avalanche of rocks that thundered down upon him. The following morning arrived, and Lucas had managed to survive, although he remained unconscious. In his state, he was visited by Abel, a friend who hoped to bring him back to consciousness. Sadly, Abel's presence did not succeed in awakening Lucas. Soon after, Keller, overwhelmed with guilt, arrived on the scene as well. Realizing the weight of his actions, he embraced Lucas tightly, apologizing sincerely for the harm he had caused. The scene was filled with deep emotions and the possibility of forgiveness. Several years passed, and it became evident that Lucas had developed a desire to reconnect with his father. Their relationship had mended over time. Lucas had become more diligent in assisting his father with the task of gathering firewood in the forest. During these years, whenever Lucas joined his father on these expeditions, he made sure to bring his gloves, prepared for the chance that he might sense Abel's presence in that very place. It was a subtle reminder of their shared history and the lessons they have learned. Finally, Lucas' wish was granted. As he journeyed homeward alongside his father, an unmistakable sense of Abel's presence enveloped the valley. At first, Lucas' father regarded his son's words with skepticism because after all, Lucas claimed to have a loyal eagle companion named Abel. Yet, doubt dissipated when Keller witnessed Abel's majestic flight from atop a cliff, just behind Lucas. In that extraordinary moment, Keller commanded Lucas to extend a gloved hand skyward. And so, Lucas and Abel were reunited at last, their separation ending after an agonizing stretch of time apart. With a heavy heart but newfound resolve, Lucas gently removed the name tag he had fastened to Abel's talon. This symbolic act signified Lucas' acceptance of letting Abel depart from his life forever. Shortly thereafter, Abel soared back to his lofty nest, where his devoted mate, Tamara, eagerly awaited the hatching of their precious eggs. The animation ends. The moral lesson from this animation is if you find a wounded eagle, take it home, teach it to fly, and then let it go. Because who needs an eagle as a pet anyway?